What's up? How are you guys this weekend? You like my new headphones? These are the uh, new air tubes on Wi-Fi shielding.com. These are actually called iBrain. So the sound is over here. So there's no like electricity in my ears, but uh, I don't know. I'm ready for the, I'm ready for the headset head, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, today we're looking at what my toddler eats in a day. Uh, some of you might remember some months back, we did a healthy baby formula video explaining how nutritious mother's milk should be, that it's very complex from a vitamin, mineral, and probiotic standpoint, and that the real best homemade formula you could do would be like raw sheep milk, raw sheep kefir with some egg yolks. That's basically it. Uh, but there's a few nuances to that if you guys do want to check that video. And outside of formula, we know that indigenous groups of people, Native Americans, Inuit Eskimos, Australian Aborigines, whoever, used to have very special feeding regimens for their nursing mothers. And those mothers would breastfeed the child for two, three, four, in some cases, even five years long. Five years of breastfeeding. And that mother's milk has a very specific ratio of fat to protein to easily digesting carbohydrates that is optimal for human physical growth. Uh, so, you know, we're assuming we're going to see a lot of plant foods and things that aren't conducive to really rapid tissue growth, but we'll see. Good morning, everyone. It is currently 6, 11 a.m. right now, which is why we are filming in the dark. Today, I am going to be showing you everything that I cook for my two-year-old son. I also want to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. I will chat about them in a little bit, but for now, we have to make breakfast because he'll be up in like the next 30 minutes. This morning, I'm going to make a couple of his favorites, starting with some pancakes. So in a blender, we're going to peel two bananas, two eggs, half a cup of milk, one and a half cups of oats, and then two teaspoons of baking powder. Then we just let it blend. Okay, and since we are making mini pancakes, I'm gonna pour everything inside this little squeezy. It just makes cleanup a lot easier. Also with this batter, you can make waffles as well. So the batter is now complete. That's not actually that bad from like a conventional perspective of what people typically eat. You know, at least there's some eggs and milk and animal protein in it. I'm also going to be making him a little rolled egg omelet. In a separate bowl, I'm going to crack one egg and then I'm just going to whisk it. Let's start frying everything. So on a pan, I'm just going to throw some butter. And then with the batter, I'm going to just start dotting little tiny pancakes. I always use my 10 inch chef's knife to cut butter. I realized that uh, if you wanted to sneak some vegetables in, throw some spinach in, but don't, I don't forgot to get some at the store. So that's not happening today. So you're just gonna let these fry until you start seeing bubbles at the top. And that is when you know did use it butter. is time to flip them. Which is good. Okie dokie, these pancakes look done. And I think what I love about this dish is that it is incredibly easy to make. And if you don't wanna use the rest of this, you could just put it in the fridge and cook some more tomorrow. And then now we're going to reset because we're gonna cook the eggs. This will only take less than a minute to cook. All right, egg kiss the pan, let's flip it, turn off the heat, that is it. So we've got the material here, the egg. I'm gonna do like a nice little rolled egg omelet, which he loves. I'm gonna just cut it into little strips like such. And now let's plate this sucker. For the main dish, I'm gonna put some mini pancakes. And then for this compartment over here. Look, it has a lot of animal protein. There's some milk and eggs in the pancakes. Possibly some better carbohydrate choices could have been made. Something easier to digest than oats for a baby. Even something refined. And yeah, you know, we're not going organic. We don't have the highest quality pasture raised corn and soy free eggs. There are some inflammation concerns, but at least the animal protein, the saturated fat, the cholesterol, and some omega fatty acids are present, which are crucial for physical development. Here I'm gonna add the egg omelet, and then in this corner, blueberries. And there we have it, folks. So blue blueberries from a 
developmental perspective, zero purpose whatsoever. If it gets the kid to enjoy pancakes and you like put blueberries in the pancakes, that's one thing, but no actual function outside of maybe a small amount of sugar if there wasn't other carbohydrates present in the meal, but. Breakfast is served. You wanna have your brekkie? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So here we have some mini pancakes. What's this, Lennon? Yeah, here is a cup of milk. You could even put the pancakes inside. The More milk, milk that's good. Really good. A lot of animal protein. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see what he eats. Pancake, yeah. He tries so, the blueberry. So, before I made lunch, I wanted Oh, uh, I wanted to see It always helps to see what the baby actually eats and naturally goes to. You know, it would be very very helpful for the final play, like after he ate, you know, how much of the pancakes did he eat? How much of the eggs did he eat? Did he drink the milk? Did he eat the blueberries? But I guess we'll never know. Overall, I would say that's an excellent, excellent meal compared to what most people are feeding their toddlers now. However, you know, compared to breast milk, the protein quality is not as good. You know, this is a kind of an omega-6 based protein. I think she did have Horizon Organic Milk. And I'm guessing maybe because of that, the eggs are organic too. So maybe we don't have as much of an agrochemical concern. However, it's still not the highest quality protein from a fat perspective she could be getting in. Main concern is the eggs. And then the oats, how well is the baby really going to digest and get the sugars from the oats in those pancakes? Blueberries, maybe a little bit of sugar, but a lot of flavonoids, not that easy to digest on the baby's stomach. Ba uh, berries are very high in oxalate. So again, very, very good compared to what most people are feeding to their toddlers. But you know, the sugar in breast milk is way more digestible than any of these carbohydrates. The saturated fat in breast milk is a much better fatty acid ratio. It's just more ideal, more ideal and, and better omega fatty acid ratios. Granted, the mother's diet is okay. Luckily, our KiwiCo Panda Crate just arrived in the mail. This is a subscription box that comes every other month, and I always get. All right, we don't really, we don't really care what this is. So just some kids play things, okay? All right, let's make some lunch now. All right, folks, on the menu for lunch we have my ground turkey alphabet stew. This is also one of those meals that you just make in bulk and then you just keep it in the fridge or freezer and heat it up when it's time to eat. All right, so let's get cracking. Everything begins with an onion, of course. Oh, she's gonna make so the whole I'm gonna thing, use right? half of an onion. I'm just gonna dice it. So I'm gonna be using a food processor to help really pulverize it. If now we're just gonna cook everything all together. Another reason why I love this soup is because I love eating it as well. So me and Lennon both really, really eat this together. Now cook this on medium to high heat for around seven minutes until everything gets like nice and mushy. That's what we're going for. Let's season this with some salt and pepper. Okie dokie. This is looking really good. Now it is time to add the ground turkey. Plop it in. Oh, what a and sad And just really soup. pulverize what a sad, it. Sad soup. I'm gonna season with some Italian herb blend. We really, now I'm gonna add we're really taking a, a step back of from breakfast. veggie stock. If this was made with beef and like a high quality beef stock, it wouldn't be as Now bad. I have some hot water. Yeah, at least if you add chicken stock or beef stock, that's where you're getting a lot more amino acids and protein. And I'm just gonna cover everything, all the contents inside the pot and maybe a little bit more. But honestly, add as much water as you want because that's how much soup you'll get. I'm gonna put it down to like medium low. Real rocket I'm gonna science add here. one bay leaf. I would, I, I would honestly, I would put it on low heat. This is, this is not something, like she's rushing through this. This is something that's supposed to take several hours to make. Uh, you know, she's... Actually, yeah, low heat. And then just let it cook for 15 minutes. This is just to marry all the flavors together. I got a smaller pot, boiled some water. I'm gonna add some salt in it. And now I'm going to boil the alphabet pasta. If you're in like a pinch for time, obviously you can just throw the noodles inside the actual stew. Now we're just gonna mix this all 
up. It's right? vegetable soup. So we have soup. a little taste test. Turkey doesn't count as meat. Wow. Turkey is a vegetable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely delicious. Lean ground turkey now from the supermarket does not count as real meat. Now we just need to serve this up and we're ready to go. In the main compartment, we'll put the soup in. And then in this compartment, I'm just going to add a couple of little bits of shredded cheese string. And then in the last compartment, some... If that is full fat string cheese, saves the meal. Saves the meal. And that's honestly healthier than the soup. If you just gave the kid a plate of cheese and grapes, I, that would actually be healthy in my book. Quarter cheese is grapes. a complete nutritional source. All right, source. and we're all finished with Lennon's lunch. Are you ready? It's your veggie alphabet soup. You've got some string cheese and some grapes. Uba. What do you go straight for the cheese? For dinner. She's I'm not show. I I don't like that. She doesn't show what he eats. So that vegetable soup, better off not having it on the plate. Everything in it besides the ground turkey does not offer the child any semblance of nutrition. Maybe the pasta can be digested to some degree by the baby as a starch carbohydrate energy source. However, the ground turkey, you know, protein is so hard to digest in general and that turkey is so low quality. Maybe he can break down the protein of it, but the cheese is a much, much better, higher quality saturated fat cholesterol granted it's it's full fat cheese so same with the grapes at least it's it's sugar it's somewhat easily digestible so i'm glad she included that in the meal otherwise you know that, that soup is kind of a, a not so great thing to give a kid now you know if the the child is a little older five six seven years old past the breastfeeding stage you know past the stage where you should be feeding them primarily just animal foods and maybe small amounts of easily digestible carbs, then you could say, okay, yeah, we could have a, a nice hearty grain-based stew, beef, barley, higher quality protein, higher quality carbs and starches. For dinner, I am making Lennon's all-time favorite meal, takbukumtang. If you've been watching this channel, you have seen me make this recipe, but this is my toddler version. It's not spicy whatsoever, and every time I'm not that good with languages, but this. that's that's Breakfast, Thai, lunch right? Or dinner. Thailand? Again, this is a meal that I just make in bulk, store in the fridge, and when he's hungry, when I'm hungry, we can all eat it. First, I'm gonna dice half an onion. I'm going to transfer all of this in this pan. Then you're gonna get an obscene amount of garlic, and then add this to the pan. So onions are pretty sulfur dominant. And that can cause issues for some people and eventually throw your minerals out of whack if you're eating a lot of them. And for the protein, I'm gonna use chicken drumsticks. Very bad. I'm gonna pour enough water so that everything kind of covers. I think I did like two big. This is an interesting question. You know, is conventional fatty chicken worse than conventional lean chicken for a developing child? You know, is the child better off eating this or chicken breast? Probably this, but they're still both very bad. Glasses of water. This is gonna make for a delicious broth. And then for seasoning. This, this, I'm sorry, this girl does not know how to cook. <laughs> she puts puts onions and raw chicken, unseared, ungrilled. Onions aren't sauteed or caramelized in just water, no stock. It's. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of soy you sauce. Pour the whole Normally bottle with takbukumtang, you add like gochujang and like Korean peppers. Oh, it's Korean. But this I'm is bad. Never mind. A I'm really bad. Two-year-old, we're talking about. <laughs> That's gonna be a little bit too <laughs> spicy. I can't even. So we're going I can't well. even tell the difference between Korea and Thailand. That's that's how good I am. Opting for something a lot more gentle. Different continents. So phase one is complete. Let's heat this on the stove for 20 minutes. No, technically not. So while that's cooking, well let's be. make ourselves useful and start peeling the sweet potato. Normally, you're supposed to use like regular potato for takbukumtang, but Lenin loves sweet potatoes. Like fun fact, he doesn't really like potatoes. But it sounds Thai. I'm pretty sweet that's, There's no way this So Korean. we are no, catering no to him. All right, sweet potatoes peeled. Someone I'm please cut off the correct edges me. Here. I'm gonna cut it in half. <sighs> sweet potato, not very digestible. For some reason, it's like, in my opinion, one of the most overrated health foods. Very high in beta carotene, very high in flavonoids. Not that easy on the stomach. All right, so now that we have quartered the sweet potato, I'm gonna use my handy dandy I think she crinkle Korean. cutter so that it's kind of like a fun <laughs> textural shape. Kids really like this. 
so we've got the sweet potatoes done. Off camera, I just washed some bok choy and then we're pretty much all done prepping. All right, my friends, it has been around 15 minutes. Woo, that looks freaking delicious. All right, this is a good time to- Bro, bro, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't actually cook based on the amount of cooking utensils and silverware she has and her cooking skills, I'd probably place a bet. To add the sweet potato. The thing with this recipe is that the chicken comes out so succulent every single time. I think it's because it's surrounded by moisture. And I'm just gonna let it cook for another like 10 minutes. Whew, things are popping off. Wow, okay. I feel like this is a good time to add the bok. It's like she's literally trying to make every meal look as bland and flavorless as possible. Did she even, she put salt in it, right? Bok choy. It doesn't take long. And then cover. See you later. Five more minutes tops and we are done. Ooh, this is looking pretty much done. Heat off. Yeah, bro, half-cooked sweet potatoes, half-cooked half -cooked bok choy, chicken. and tough chicken. Delicious. It's delicious. Oh All right, God. so in this panel, I'm gonna put some fresh, delicious rice. I'm actually gonna do Lennon a favor, and I'm going to chop up the chicken so that it's easy for him to eat. This one is gonna go right over here. The sweet potato in this corner over We're here. We're gonna find out, hold on, what is He's that called? In this Dak bom Dak bokom tang. It's Korean. All right, I'm an idiot. All right, that's Korean. Here, the sweet potato in this corner over here. He's definitely not going to eat the bok choy, but they say the kid needs to try. Something. She admits he doesn't eat the bok choy. His instincts, no vegetables. Something at least twelve times before they know they like. <laughs> hold on, hold on. What did, who said that? Who told her that? 12 times? But they say a kid needs Who's to try they? something at least 12 times before they know. A, how, how does that sound? A kid needs to try something at least 12 times <laughs> Bro, bro. <laughs> Do you have to try something 12 times before you, you know you like it or not? Do you have to go? I'm not, all right, I'm not gonna make a chub fest joke. I was gonna say, do you have to go to chub fest 12 times? before you know if you like it or not or can you just google what chub fest is and get in on my inside joke and say oh hell no i do not need to try chub fest <laughs> all right i'm being dumb guys but the point is th the child has instincts and when they try it once they know they don't want it or not you know they like it so we try again we just keep trying there we yeah. have it dinner is served <laughs> okay so white rice is probably the easiest to digest starch carb source for a baby uh, with the obvious arsenic concern that we've spoken about a lot so i would be worried about giving it to a child more than like two or three times a week low quality chicken is a protein source not really a fan at least he's getting some animal protein sweet potatoes and bok choy i am indifferent about i don't think they offer anything to a growing or developing child so if this was, you know, high quality chicken and organic rice, I think it would be an okay meal to feed a toddler. However, ideally, you would have the mother eating higher quality versions of these meals and breastfeeding the child. And then after a two or three year period of breastfeeding, the foods that are introduced to the child's diet should be predominantly meat and some grains, mostly meat, mostly animal protein. And then he can have like healthy grains or they can have healthy grains or she can have healthy or the alien, whatever you want to call your kid now. The alien can have healthy. <laughs> Guys, I'm losing it. I'm so exhausted. But the point is that high quality solid foods shouldn't really be introduced until two to three years old. And, so, and I'm not that good at judging the age of kids. I really don't know how old this kid is, but almost no one breastfeeds as long as they should anymore. You know, they're stopping around crazy like six seven eight months of formula breastfeeding and then that's it then they move on to trying to give the kid normal foods and that's why these kids aren't as healthy and smart and tall and pretty whatever they're just not as developed as they should be there needs to be a lot of animal nutrition in each meal and then those secondary foods need to serve a purpose 
whether it's starch, carbohydrate energy, whether it's uh, probiotics, you know, there's a lot of things, balancing out nutrients and minerals. You know, the only reason I include a lot of like starch and fiber sources in my diet is to detox my liver. Otherwise, my diet would actually look a bit different and, and something similar that you could feed a toddler. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, that Honestly, that first meal threw me off. That, that threw me off. I thought we were going to have a really good day of eating after uh, seeing, you know, this for breakfast. You know, she gave the kid eggs, pancakes with eggs and milk, and then a tall glass of milk, which to me is excellent. But then, you know, lunch would have been really bad if he didn't have the cheese. And dinner was probably the worst meal overall, uh, even though I am a fan of the white rice compared to like the pasta or the oat pancakes. Um, yeah, interestingly... If she just gave the kid white rice with meat every meal, it'd probably be healthier than this diet. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. If you guys want to support me, you can check out franktestafano.com for all of my interesting businesses. A lot of new stuff going on this week, as usual, new products on all the websites. We should do the free range meat vlog tomorrow if you guys want to tune in and see me lose my mind. Uh, I mentioned these at the beginning. The iBrain uh, accidentally ordered these instead of the in-ear uh, air tubes, the, the earbuds, the, these are better because when you have something in your ear, the earwax can't come out properly, but sometimes these are a little uncomfortable times, but you guys can check these out on wifi shielding.com. They're the most affordable ones online. Uh, you can read more about them on there, but as always guys, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.